Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Before we begin, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it really helps us reach others in need of assistance with these particular topics. So what we're going to be discussing today or going over today um, is components and resultants using the rectangular method. Now, um, you may also hear this uh, method referred to as the triangular rule or the rectangular rule. It's all the same thing, just depends on who you're talking to. So we're going to be solving this problem shown here on the left where we have this hook nine or we have 900 newtons uh 30 degrees off the horizontal and then 60 or 600 newtons off 45 degrees from the 900 and we have to determine the result in between these two so first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw a free body diagram and then we're going to work off of that so i'm going to set up an xy coordinate system here and i'm going to apply my forces the center of my origin point will be the center of the hook here where those forces collide. So first up, I have this 900 newtons here, 30 degrees off the horizontal, and then I have a 600 newtons up in this direction, which is an additional 45 degrees. So my resultant is going to lie somewhere between these two, and we just have to determine how much or what the uh, magnitude of that resultant is and its location, meaning the angle off of the x-axis. So what we're going to do using the rectangular method is that we're going to look at each force individually, and we're going to break it up into its x and y components. So let's start with the 600 first. So... The 600, if we redraw it real quick in an XY coordinate system, looks like this with a total angle of 45 plus 30, which gives me 75 degrees off of the X axis. Now, breaking it up into its XY components, we have to determine which way the X and Y are going. Well, it always depends upon which way this main force is going. The 600 Newtons is going up and to the right. So my Y component will be going upwards and my X component will be going to the right so that they match this up and to the right. So we are up and to the right. Now that we have the direction, let's actually calculate their values, starting with the FX first. Well, this just forms a little right triangle here. And if you wanna draw it like this, you can, where we have the 600 Newtons. We have FX here. And then we have Fy over here, and we have an angle of 75 degrees inside. So we can use cosine and sine and just rearrange that. So looking for the Fx here, it will be my magnitude of my force, 600 newtons, and it will be cosine of my angle. Cosine will be used because cosine is adjacent, and the Fx is adjacent to the side over here of 75 degrees. Anytime the angle is coming off of that particular direction, you want to use cosine. And then the Fy will be, once again, that main force of 600 newtons, and it will be sine of that angle. Because the Fy is not touching the angle, it is opposite that angle, and sine is opposite. So actually calculating these x and y components here, the FX pops out to be 155.3 Newtons to the right. And then the F, or sorry, the FX is 153 point, or 155.3. And then the FY is 579.6 Newtons in the upwards direction. So there's one of the forces already broken into an X and Y component. So let's do the 900 then. And we'll do this one in red just to change the color up. So very similar little mini diagram here where we have the 900 up and to the right, an angle of 30 degrees with my X and Y axis here. Since the 900 is up and to the right, its components in the Y and X direction will be upwards and to the right. Easy way to remember that arrow direction, the components have to match the generalized direction of that force up and to the right, so up to the right. So once again, our FX, if we make a little triangle just like what we did before, our FX is going to be 900 newtons, and it will be cosine of 30 degrees. 
just because the angle's off of the fx. So cosine is adjacent. And then Fy will be 900 newtons sine of 30 degrees because the angle is opposite the Fy and sine is opposite. So calculating these out, Fx gives me 779.4 newtons to the right. And then Fy gives me exactly 450 newtons in the upward direction. So now I've transformed the 600 into these components and then the 900 into these components. And we're going to add these together in the F and Y directions to get a total in each direction. So let's sum forces in the X direction. We'll take everything acting to the right as a positive number, everything to the left as a negative number. Well, we only have two FX forces, one here and one here for each of those and they're both going to the right, so they both will be positive. So we have 155.3 newtons plus 779.4 newtons, and that gives us a total of 934.7 newtons acting to the right. And then just repeat the process for the FY direction, summing forces in the vertical direction will take up as positive, everything in the downward direction will be negative, once again, we only have two. They're both in the upward direction, so they're just going to add together. So we would have 579.6 plus the 450, and that will end up being 1,029.6 newtons in the upwards direction. So essentially what I've done here, if I scroll a little bit further here, essentially what I've done here is that I have concluded that the 600 and the 900 newtons from the very beginning of the problem form something that looks like this, where we have our X of 934.7 and our Fy of 1,029.6 newtons in the upward direction. My resultant will finish out this triangle, hence why it's sometimes called the triangular rule. And this forms a right triangle, where the resultant is the magnitude that I'm looking for, and this angle right here is the angle off of the x-axis for my location that I'm looking for. So since it's a right triangle, we can easily solve for the resultant force just using the Pythagorean theorem. And it would look like this in variable form, where we would have the total of our sum of Fy squared plus the total of our Fx summed together squared and then square rooted from the a squared plus b squared equals c squared for Pythagorean theorem. So let's just go ahead and plug in our numbers here. So we would have our Fy, which is the 1,029.6 squared, plus the Fx of 934.7 squared, square rooted. And that gives us a resultant value of 1390.6 Newtons in that general upright direction. So there's my magnitude already solved for. One big thing that a lot of people forget to do is the square rooting part. That's usually the most missed thing in that process right there. All right. So now to find the angle. Well, I can find the angle here. <clears throat> I'm just going to put it up here in this little corner. Technically, we should be writing in the downward direction continuously, but we'll just write up here. So we're just going to use tangent. And anytime you're looking for the angle off of the X, it will be tangent of your angle is equal to the summation of the Fy divided by the summation of Fx. Thus, your angle will be the tangent inverse of that of those values, which let's just go ahead and fill that in. For Fy, we have 1029.6 over Fx, which is 934.7. And that gives me an angle of 47.7 degrees off of the X. So if you wanted to actually draw it, it would look something like this, where we have our X, we have our Y, the center of the hook, that 600 and 900 Newtons will combine to form 1390.6 Newtons of force at 47.7 degrees off of the X axis. And that's how you would work that problem using the rectangular method, or it can be called the rectangular rule or the triangular rule. It goes by multiple names, just depends on who you're talking to.
So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see other problems solved of this variety, we do have other videos on our channel. So please check them out. Also, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you leave this video a like and subscribe to our channel as it really does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.